but really we realize owning guns and being able to own guns is actually a form of, of freedom. It's, it's a form of autonomy. It's something that can keep you, uh, or at least it bars you from austerity, which is their goal. Their goal is austerity. But owning property, owning your own guns, being able to think for yourself, being able to grow your own food, right? These types of things are safeguards against austerity. So of course they need to break down all of these things. So we have no choice but to be subject to their will. So what we find with that, that I believe that has a great deal to do with the gun control as far as trying to demonize guns instead of actually figuring out that it's not the guns, it's actually the culture and the people behind them that are the problem. Recently, there was a debate between Destiny and another guy about gun control and Destiny was destroyed. I mean, it's been proven that carrying people allowed to carry guns and, and having guns brings less violence in certain communities, mind you. Now, of course, if you go into somewhere like inner city Chicago, it probably would be better that people don't have guns. Okay, you go to somewhere like Brazil, you probably have less death. At least the rate of death would probably slow down if you took away the guns. But then what would they do? They'd go to knives. <laughs> they'd, go to, they'd go to this, they'd go to that. So they'd figure out ways to kill. Guns may kill a little fast with the speed of bullets and all of this but you wouldn't fix the problem you can lower the rate possibly but you would not fix the problem picking up the weapon doesn't fix the use of the weapon or the purpose behind the use of the weapon and these are very logical rational ways of you know understanding these things but <laughs> what you find is these things are never addressed ever so this is this is proof of the insanity this is proof of the narrative this is proof that there's no real thought processes going on at least no authentic honest logical thought processes going on behind all of this crap we're seeing today which is more proof to demonstrate that this is actually a long drawn out psychodramatic uh, narrative here with an ulterior motive an ulterior goal in fact which isn't humanitarianism, which, which isn't egalitarianism. These are all this idea of progress. These, these are all red herrings and, and straw men. Of course, racism is the next one. So then we get this whole political thing. The whole political controversy is just to confuse us and just to divide us and, and to get us to take sides. And of course, to focus on the self. We, we discussed this before, this normative uh, or generalized narcissism. This idea of, of focusing on the self, this uh, identity, salvation, self, self, salvation through self. And with this, you find ideology supersedes or usurps the nature of humankind, humanity. Ideology over humanity. Also, we could say ideology over nature, over our nature. So it's not what I am, it's what I think. That's the, the double mind, the in, inducing the double mind. This is, this is how they do that. They get us to focus more on what they think, what they can perceive, opposed to what actually is. And uh, this, this leads to more manipulation. So what happens is if you can get a group, because we are the group, this is group therapy. The uh, United States is, is undergoing group therapy. We're a massive group going through this type of psych psychodrama. So if they can get the whole group to identify with things that are ideological only, to the point where we detach from our natures, we detach from what's actually real, it's much more easier to manipulate us. It's so much easier to get us to believe whatever they put before our eyes when, when we have been rendered to that type of human, right? To where we don't really even, we're not even attached to ourselves anymore. And, and of course, we're completely detached from God by this point as well. But the point is this, it's about how you live. Right? This is the importance of, of what you believe in your value systems, you know, how, how you walk, what you put in your body. That's why all these things are so important, because God has given us these things in a way that they have an effect, right? They, they definitely have, should we say, uh, uh, there's consequences involved, okay? There's consequences involved. They could sell us this whole libertine fantasy, do as thou wilt, this Epicurean lifestyle. Right, of just enjoying like the best of, of life, eat the greatest foods, do the fun stuff, do whatever feels good. There's consequences to this. Hence the importance of scripture, hence, hence the importance of righteousness, obedience, discipline, faith, all of these things. So um, yeah, it's prevention. Okay, we could prevent things like cancer by way of diet, lifestyle. Can't cure it, but they want us to believe we can cure it. And what's the thing they say? You know, a wonder drug, right? Or a magic pill. The end of cancer. We're coming up with this this new treatment. You have the treatment. That's the thing. That's the thing. It's like we're just being completely manipulated here. Life, the world, humanity is so much more simpler than they lead us to believe. And this has all to do with the fact that we are 
in the middle of a type of drama. So uh, how do they promote human depopulation? Well, they promote human depopulation by creating these types of uh, scapegoats and, and red herrings to divert society. So they divert us from actually considering the importance of our diets and our lifestyle. They divert us from what really matters to keep us from developing cancer, to keep us from developing heart disease and all of these things that are killing off the majority of society. If you look up the research, nearly 50% of humanity dies from these two things here, heart disease and cancer. 50% of our species, guys. We're not talking about 900 cases of measles in a year. We're not talking about a handful of, of different types of uh, autoimmune diseases out there. We're talking about 50% of the species is dying from these things. Much bigger fish to be fried. And it's fascinating the way they completely ignore this. They completely disregard this. More proof for the dishonesty, more proof for the, mani the manipulation. So what do they do? Diverting society, basically. Diverting society from proven from the proven significance of diet and lifestyle, okay? They divert us from what has been proven. If you don't want cancer, if you don't want heart disease, change the way you eat and change the way you live your life. And do it early. The earlier, the better. This has been proven. What they do is they divert us from that proven significance by inducing misguided fear, anxiety, anger, and preoccupation with unproven and even in some cases disproven and illegitimate information. Like what? Climate change, alleged epidemics, gun control, oh racism, oppression, sexism. You see how this works? We're just so preoccupied with all of these concepts right now, we can't even realize that we're killing ourselves and they are holding our hands while we do it. They're selling us the products. They're promoting us the foods, the food culture, the food industry, the lifestyles, the drinking, the partying the reckless lifestyle. This is part of the fantasy. This is part of the drama to get wrapped up like you're playing a character. You have a role in the psychodrama. You're the cool guy. You're the pretty girl. You're the, the sloth, you know? You're, you're the, the hard worker. You, you're the good mom. You're the good dad. But at the same time, you're playing into the psychodrama. You're smoking, you're drinking, you're eating like crap. You're eating every other 10 minutes. You're snacking every damn day. You're eating chocolate and sugar all the time. You're not drinking no water at all, hardly. You're drinking soda pop all the time. You're not doing any exercises. You're just too wrapped up in all your day-to-day -day crap. You're too concerned with what he thinks, what she thinks, what they think. You're not praying. You're not fasting. You're not reading the scriptures. You're not putting God first in your life. You're not making sure you're not only being obedient and disciplined in, in your lifestyle, but you, you're not making sure you, you are doing right in his eyes. And then we got the atheists and the agnostics and the new agers and the occultists who don't believe in none of that. And they make up, I'd say, probably the majority of the population, especially in America. And half of them call themselves Christian. You know, got us want to worry about people's sexuality. Got us want to worry about sex education. Got us worrying about people's gender identities. People don't even know how to eat right. People aren't even having healthy bowel movement. They got diarrhea every other day. And they don't know why, and they don't care. They just deal with it. Haven't had a solid BM in, in months. I mean, these, these, are, these, these are very normal, natural things that we all should habitually be aware of. But see, our nature has been replaced by this synthetic experience of technological progress and information revolution. Humanity is slowly being displaced and exchanged for this type of new human where we're foregoing our own nature, we're foregoing our own natural needs in exchange for, for convenience, in exchange for these, these gadgets and these experiences and, and the likes and the swipes and we're losing touch, not just with reality, not just with God, but our own humanity. They want us to believe in cures. You know why they want us to believe in cures? Because if you believe in cures, you believe in their medicines. You believe in their technological medical industries. You believe they can fix things for you. They can fix everything for you. Why do you need a God? They can do it all for you here, right? Cures, cures for everything. This promotes, first off, the pharmaceutical industry. But moreover, it solidifies society's dependence on the medical technopoly. What do we have? We have vaccines. They're gonna have a vaccine for everything in about, say, 10, 20 years. We're gonna be pumping ourselves with vaccines. I mean, vaccines, wonder drugs, right? They got a damn drug for everything. They got a pill for everything. 
and of course, technological synthetic therapies. Wait for it, it's coming. All of this stuff is coming. And the only way they can get us to actually accept these things and say okay and acquiesce is by disconnecting ourselves. They're disconnecting our society from our nature and from God and for our, from our purposes. Therefore, we become the tools for the tool. Human progression stops for the progression of technology instead. What's the goal? Proper diet. This takes discipline to have a proper diet. Discipline is part of being godly. How can you be obedient without discipline? Don't tell me you don't have discipline to eat right or to do what you got to do to keep your health. It's not about worshiping your body or worshiping your health. It's about doing what you need to do to be healthy. I think that's protecting and taking care of your temple, right? It is your temple. You aren't supposed to just put anything in it and destroy it with smoke and alcohol and horrible processed foods. How can you be obedient if you have no discipline? How can you be obedient to God in, in one sentence, but then lack discipline when it comes to what you put in your body? That's called being double-minded. And I know many of us are. Maybe we didn't even think about it. Maybe we didn't even realize that all of these things are under the same umbrella. You must take care of yourself. You must be concerned with how you're living, not just spiritually, but physically. Now, it's not something to be worshipped as, as they try to sell us in the media. All right, worship your body, get plastic surgery, and, and try to make yourself beautiful. It has nothing to do with any of that. It's about respecting God's creation, upholding the nature that he has provided you, making sure it's properly nourished, cared for, proper diet, and a godly lifestyle. People who live this are pretty much exempt from this whole psychodrama. We don't buy into their products. We don't buy into their lies. We don't play into their mind games. We see through their gaslighting. We can deconstruct their statistical arguments. We can find the illogical arguments because we're in a so we have a sober mind. We're in a sound state. We're nourished. We're strong, and we're doing right by God. So our consciences are stable and content. Of course, we have the Holy Spirit. Proper diet, godly lifestyle, faith-based, moral, loving, fulfilling, obedient, disciplined, wise, and repented. Moreover, repented, because you know, this is a requirement. It frees one from codependent relationship with society today. 